<laughs> you know, we're already starting to get this. And you know, part of what he was saying was, you know, it's uh, you should have multi-layered defense instead. He's completely right. <laughs> you know, we just have one solution out of many. But I mean, the point being, people are gonna start attacking the RFID Guardian as soon as it's available. Another thing is, we need to use secure programming for the RFID Guardian because, of course, once it's out, people are gonna start attacking the RFID Guardian. <laughs> I mean, heaven knows this has happened with other kinds of privacy-enhancing technologies like Tor. So it's not gonna be any different with our technology either. So I'm fully expecting this. Yes. So I was wondering, I don't know that much about uh, RFID, but if you use um, a directional antenna. Mm -hmm. Be able to because of course the, uh, the, the, the Guardian can only pick up if, like if you aim something exactly at it. If you, mm -hmm. I don't know, if you, can you make a directional antenna to basically query one RFID? Bypassing yes, yes. This is a completely valid way to bypass the RFID Guardian because the RFID Guardian cannot stop an RFID query that it can't hear. So if you build a Yagi antenna and you, you know, set, set, point it right at that RFID tag and the gar Guardian can't hear it, it can't do anything about it. But it does make life more difficult for the attacker because he needs to know exactly where that RFID tag is so he can point it. <laughs> so, I mean, yes, this is a valid way to attack it, but the attacker really needs to know what they're trying to accomplish with this attack. So, any other questions? Uh, yes. I want to counter what was said first. There are a lot of friends, I have done some friend modeling for customers, uh, for RFID users, and there are a lot of really scary friends a tool like this is absolutely urgently needed. And app use, for example, for stealing something of LFID is trivial. You just queue a little bit uh, of uh, aluminum tin for it on the LFID, and it's back. So misuse of LFID text is very easy for the criminal part, but analyzing the security is impossible without a tool like this, and for that reason. This tool is in Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong, I, I think it's perfect. I think it's a great idea. But if you don't think about stealing, if you think about someone walking through an airport and blocking someone else's passport, getting into the call, things like that, I mean, there's tons of <clears throat> Look, look, uh, look let's, let's save this discussion for afterwards, but I, I, I have to say I agree with both of you. <laughs> I mean, also another, thing, peop another pe thing people ask all the time is, you know, why, why do you need an RFID guardian? Because you can just put your tag in the microwave and you can just put aluminum foil around your tag. I mean, they're right, you can, but it's much more coarse-grained access control than, you know, <laughs> if you're doing it via radio. So, all right, uh, are there any more questions before we wrap up? Yes. Yeah, one more question. You were saying like how our RFID chips are getting uh, there's more and more space available for, for uh, storage and mm -hmm. such. And uh, probably going to get smarter as well. So why not actually put all this these kind of tricks on the actual RFID chips? Okay. Uh, there's a number of reasons. One, I think uh, if you can put security on an RFID tag, you should. <laughs> because like other people have been saying, I think multi-layered defense is best. However, what, what are some advantages of uh, doing off-tag uh, protection as opposed to on-tag protection? Probably the most important one is key management. <laughs> because you could have an access control list on every single RFID tag, but what happens then when you want to update your policy? <laughs> What happens if you want to update the key? Because you know, occasionally it's it's kind of nice if you can you know refresh keys and things like this. Um, I think in such a way it's much easy, more easy to deal with uh, if you have a centralized platform as opposed to uh, just trying to manage all of this in a distributed fashion. So I think it's good to have the primitives there. It's good to have the tools there. And another thing also is that RFID tags in some scenarios are supposed to be cheap. And for the, uh, I mean, you're right that tags are going to keep getting more powerful, but also there's going to be a demand for lower and lower end tags and cheaper and cheaper tags. Once they have the 10 cent tags, they're going to want the 5 cent tags. Once they have the 5 cent tags, they're going to want the 1 cent tag. Once they, once they have the 1 cent tag, et cetera. <laughs> so the point being, there is always going to be a low end. And I mean, how, how much, you know, what that low end is, is, is details, and that's going to evolve as time goes on. But there's always going to be, it's a fundamental problem that it's the low end of computing, and there's always is going to be a low end of computing. So the question, fundamental question is, how do you protect the low end of computing when it can't protect itself? So I think these kinds of issues are relevant no matter what. So last question. Yeah, if you touch money, how much is this guardian? I mean, to build this hardware, 
Yeah. So um, right now, we're, we're trying to have a price point probably of around $200, $250. We're assuming that's going to be realistic uh, for manufacturing it in reasonably small quantities. We want to make it uh, cheap enough that people can purchase it still kind of as a toy. <laughs> but um, right now, the most expensive component is basically the uh, uh, the PXA processor, the, the development board. We're actually going to be phasing that out uh, probably in version 4 of our design just simply due to the fact that these little Triton modules are too expensive. It's about 130 euros for one of these modules and people, I mean that's more than half of the cost of what we want this to be. So we're going to have to redesign that ourselves. But that being said, you know, we, we want to make it cheaper and it's, it's all in how many quantities people want these things. But like I said, in, in the long run, if people really want Guardians, if somebody can make a one chip version of these things, I have no doubt that it could be, come as cheap as any other radio I see. <laughs> I mean, and that's really, you know, the low end of it. Because if you then attach it to, you know, <coughs> perhaps the X scale processor in your, uh, in your cell phone, all of a sudden you've got something on scale that you can really distribute. So right now we don't have ourselves the facilities to do this, but I mean, maybe someday it'll happen, maybe. So. But uh, yeah, I mean, what, what, what we want though is, uh, once again, if, if any of you guys either are hardware engineers or know hardware engineers <laughs> that would like to help us uh, with the engineering effort, I mean, one of the top things on our list right now is get rid of the Triton module. <laughs> so if you know any people who, uh, are, are, you know, <laughs> have some chops in hardware design and want to help us with this, please. Because I mean, the more people we can get helping with, the, with this, the quicker we can actually get it to you guys. Uh, hopefully also with a bit of the seed funding, we can also hire some professionals uh, to be helping us with this as opposed to just having wonderful bachelor students doing it. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. We're, we're doing it as quickly as we can, but this kind of stuff does take time. So, okay. Well, thank you for coming.